Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the day two of the ETHR World Human Capital Experience Summit 2021, adapting EX for a scalable hybrid workforce. Given the circumstances we are in today, empowering employees is essential for business sustenance and growth. This makes human capital experience a vital point of discussion. HR leaders must revisit their approaches to building a motivated, forward-looking organizational atmosphere where employees are encouraged and appreciated for their efforts. They must also realign initiatives for upskilling engagement, collaboration, and compliance that positively boost talent. Today at the summit, we have industry experts here with us to elucidate the approaches HR leaders must take to reinforce their employee experience. Ladies and gentlemen, the hashtag for this event is ETHRHCE. Let us use this hashtag to share the highlights of the event with a larger audience on social media. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of all our partners in helping us in making this event possible. In association with GE, powered by ACKO Insurance, co-powered by Roundglass, Masterclass partner Harappa, Scaling partner Tesserect, Gold partner HeroWired, Knowledge partner Deloitte, Telecast partner ETNOW, Exhibitor, Great HR, EventTech partner VConfix. Thank you to all of you. Now let's begin the show with a keynote address on reimagining human experience in 2022. In this session, we will get to know the stepping stones to curate a positive EX for the hybrid workforce that will become a game changer for the year 2022. Also a roadmap that will clear the roadblocks in the journey of achieving a transformational EX. I would like to welcome Shona Elliott, cultural renewal expert, best-selling author to shed some light on the topic. Over to you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Human Capital Experience Summit of 2021. It's my honor to kick off the summit and kick off a day of incredible presentations and discussion about the single most important topic that all of us as business owners, leaders, and HR professionals should be focused in on as the year winds down, which is the experience of our employees, the humans that we interact with each day and every day in the workplace. What does that look like for 2022? And what can we learn from 2020 and 2021 that will help shape our approach to 2022? I'm sure all of you have had your own individual experiences of the pandemic over the last two years and of the never ending change and the fluidity and the rapid change that we've experienced as a result of the pandemic and all of the outflows that have uh, come from it. The one thing that we can learn from the last two years is that one thing has been constant, which is, which is us, which is our employees, which is the human beings working in our businesses and in companies and organizations each and every day, all trying to do their best work and provide value in their respective roles. So since that is a constant and yet the world around us continues to evolve, what does 2022 look like as we focus in on our hopes, dreams, and vision of the future. So let's start with a visioning exercise. If you get a second, close your eyes. You, most of you will be at a computer or a desk. Take a moment, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and sit back and think about the best experience you have had in an organization or in a workplace, or perhaps just in general and in life. What did it feel like to you? What was it that made that experience so special, so rewarding? Did you feel inspired by it? Were you motivated by it? Did it shift your approach in terms of how you wanted to contribute in the workplace? As you reflect on those moments and you look at where you're at today, use that to frame what your focus will be in the next year ahead. The experiences that you had that were positive, that did inspire you to do your best work, that made you feel part of something bigger than your own single contribution. Is that what you want for the employees working in your organization? I assume the answer is yes. And as you do so, think about what those conditions were that made that experience for you so positive. I'm sure it wasn't quotas or productivity numbers or 
uh, goals or rocks achieved or OKRs achieved. It was something bigger than that. You felt inspired to contribute to a mission of an organization or to a leader's vision. And you felt rewarded and you felt part of the team and that you felt like your contribution, regardless of your role mattered. These are all things that we as humans value in the workplace today. We always have, and fortunately over the last four to five years, maybe the last decade, there has been a shift from the traditional view of employees as resources or as capital or as the workforce to one of employee experience and most importantly of human beings. We all desire to contribute by doing our best work to achieve something that we greater than what we could achieve on our own. And the conditions in our organizations in the workplace need to foster that and need to cultivate that. So how can you as an HR professional, business owner or leader shape this culture? What role do you play? What is your impact in the organization with every step that you take, every decision you make, every meeting you attend? How do you shape that? And what can you do to help create that culture and those conditions in your own organizations in the upcoming year. So it does start with a few things. One is doing some professional development, uh, some self-learning, and this summit is certainly going to help shape that for you. There's many amazing presenters uh, in the next two days and panelists all focused in on the employee experience on focusing in on how to create conditions in a hybrid workplace that foster deep recognition and rewards. It's a good start. And as you think of 2022, what are some other steps you can take for your own learning and development that keep you on this quest to create the conditions in your organizations to uh, have employees feel valued, enriched and feeling like they are able to contribute to the overall mission in your organization. Additionally, as you step back and take a look at your own role in the past year, what are some things that you felt could have been done differently? Do you feel that you had the conditions or perhaps the permissions of your HR professional from those you report to, to be able to shape the culture of your organization? Do you feel like you have a good pulse in the culture of your organization today? If the answers are yes, great. Build on the successes of what you've already accomplished in the past year. If the answer is yes, somewhat and somewhat not, focus in on those areas where you felt that you did not achieve what your own goals were, or you felt you could have approached it different. And if the answer is no, not yet, then 2022 really does offer you an incredible opportunity to harness the learnings from the past year and look at shaping your own goals and shaping your role and shaping your influence and impact to really change the conditions of the employees in the organization, one that focuses in on their experience in 2022. One of the things that I like to personally do as a leader regardless of what leadership role I had, whether that was a vice president of human resources, a COO or a CEO, is find my own way to keep connected to the reality within the organization in which I was leading. I felt often in any role that I had that I was somewhat disconnected from the reality of what employees were experiencing and not by design, but just by the structure of reports and the busyness of senior leaders or leaders in organizations are, I just felt like I didn't have a pulse. And so I found my own way to connect with the reality of our employees by what I call walking in an employee's shoes. So for me, what worked best, it was to try to carve out some time. Sometimes it was a full shift, sometimes a few hours where I would walk alongside and work with employees. I would um, answer the uh, support desk uh, phones and to try my best to triage tickets. When I was working in healthcare, I would deliver food trays, help prepare them. I would work as an environmental services worker and clean the ORs. I would shadow along with physicians in the emergency room or in the ORs. And I would do that on the weekends or the night shift all in the quest to really see what was happening on the front lines. 
I did that in my role as an HR leader. I did that in my role as a manager uh, and a CEO and a CEO. And each time I did that, I always learned something new. I always learned uh, the impact of the decisions we made as leaders. I built relationships along the way. But most importantly, I walked away from the situations in awe of the amazing work and contributions of our frontline employees. And I walked away each and every time with a new and inspired perspective in regards to what my mission was as a leader, the mission of our organization. And I walked away with what our employees needed from our organization to continue to do their best work. That looks a little bit different these days in a hybrid workplace or a remote workplace. So I encourage you to find your own way in your own role to be able to connect with employees, no longer just looking at the plethora of data you have and analytics that you have at your fingertips, but try to make that data and those analytics come to life by seeing and feeling and experiencing what those that are working and serving your customers in your organization feel on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes that might mean you know, attending meetings you wouldn't attend otherwise virtually, might mean chatting with individuals you wouldn't chat with uh, through the course of a day or a week and asking them some questions and talking to them about how their day is going and what is working well and what their challenges and pain points are. It's finding if you're able to work alongside employees, if you are in office or in the workplace, if you're able to do that, I highly encourage it. And it's finding what works best for you and finding your own way to find that deeper connection. In the world of HR, I find specifically that we as HR leaders are pretty much focused in on the traditional HR aspects of our roles the comp, the, the benefits, um, the attendance, the recruitment and the retention, all very important. And there's something much deeper to it all, which is how do our employees feel and what is their experience in the workplace? And as you can experience that more yourself, you will come away with a new perspective as to where you should be focusing your efforts and where leaders need to be focusing their efforts in the workplace. And I'm often asked, well, how do you find the time to do that? We're all very busy and trying to find ways for three to four hours or even a full shift once a month or once every couple months seems like a daunting task. And I too have struggled with that in my own career. And I have walked away with the belief that this is the work. This is the work of CEOs, business owners, HR professionals, and any leader, regardless of what your leadership role is, is this is the work. There's nothing more important than connection with employees and getting a true pulse of actually what is happening. With that actual connection, you'll begin to understand the reality. So your decisions become a bit more informed. You understand the faces of those that are numbers on your data sheet or in reports. And with a different lens to focus in on or see through, you will begin to make better decisions that have actually better impact. And you will be building relationships along the way. Your perspective will shift and it will shift to one that sees employees beyond the numbers, beyond the goals as who they are. Incredible, creative, resourceful human beings all who share the same need as you and I, which is to create something bigger than ourselves, something meaningful, something positive in our day-to-day -day work. You'll begin to see that in each and every one of those uh, interactions that you have, and that will help shape and shift your focus for 2022. So as you go through the next two days of incredible presentations and panelists, all focused in on the most incredible subject matters and topics. I encourage you to keep one thing in focus and top of mind, which is what do your employees really see and really feel? Not through survey data, not through reports or analytics, but through their stories, through their experiences. And how do you really know what they're feeling and what your culture is? Find your way to find that deeper connection 
that deeper human experience that your employees and your organization are feeling and experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis and use that connection to help shape and frame your focus and strategy for 2022. I hope you enjoy the next two, day of, two days of amazing speakers and panelists. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of the chats and the discussions uh, online in the next few days. Have a wonderful summit. And the fact that you are here participating means you feel like I do, that the human experience is the single most important focus us as leaders have in our organizations today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Elliot, for sharing a roadmap that will clear the roadblocks in the journey of achieving a transformational EX. Now we'll proceed to the next session. You all can use the chat box feature to ask the questions from our experts. They would love to answer your questions. Also, do not forget to participate in the sprint and stride activity where you will see a pop-up question on your screen. Submit your answer at the earliest to win a jackpot prize. We will have three champions for the activity. So keep a tab on the sessions as the questions will be announced during the course of the day. Stay tuned as we'll proceed further.